Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another week of BlastCast. Of course, I am Jarus, and with me, as always, my bastion of common sense, Lightning Dragon. And before we get started today, I do have a couple announcements I kind of want to go through. Uh, one of them is, as I have not been responding as much in the actual text on videos recently, uh, I plan to be actually starting a Q&A show because often there's a lot of repeat questions and other things that come up, and some things basically I feel that require a little bit more depth or I want to actually speak about directly. So I kind of want to start approaching it this way. The channel's been growing very, very quickly, and I really feel that this is kind of the best way to approach it. And who knows, I might even throw lightning in there sometimes just to annoy you. Uh, yeah, because apparently no one likes me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm going to put two links down below to an episode one and episode two of a series called Combined Arms by Trellian. And it is fantastic stuff. I don't know if you have seen it already. You definitely know what I'm talking about. Uh, I sent the links to Lightning this week, and uh, he got a kick out of them, I think. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's kind of like uh, Red vs. Blue Machinima kind of stuff. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, but it's a lot more serious. It's more of a drama. Oh, yeah, it is it is very serious. You, you could almost take it as like a, like a Squadron 42 episode kind of thing, but not part of Squadron 42. I mean, it, it's like very, very high level. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. And it, it's actually worth watching, especially the part where all those ships jump in. I love that. Just seeing all those ships and stuff. It, it, it's just, they're not all fully textured and stuff. I mean, they're, they're textured well enough, but it's just like, but to see like whole fleets of ships jumping in, like, oh, ho, 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 I want to see this in game. So, yeah, definitely watch that. Definitely worth adding to your watch later list if you haven't seen it. Of course, this week, the happy hour was actually worth watching. It was not gameplay. They were actually had Sean Tracy on there, and they were covering how to basically design a space whale, at least when it comes to the production schedule. It's very technical level. They're like go, it, It's basically like a spreadsheet they're going through. So if you like watching spreadsheets, it's amazing. And, and Sean Tracy is always is great to listen to. Just everything he does is amazing. If he's in part of something, it's good. So they're, they're going through, and... They're basically just like, what do you want to add? Oh, this, this is the, we have to add this, you have to add this, you know, and different teams are going to be working on this thing. And they, they break it down all into, uh, like, what it is, if it's art, if it's you know, engineering. Uh, I can't remember the entire list off the top of my head. Um, and then, like, what they need to do in that section. And then they like, okay, well, how many people are going to be in it? And then it's like, okay, well, you know, if you want all these features, this is how many days it's going to take. Well, if you don't want an interior of something... Well, I just took like a month of work out of it. It was really interesting to, to watch and see because it's one of those things where you might actually like know that it takes a long time to do the stuff, but you maybe you don't know how they break it down. So it was a bit long, you know, it's an hour and a half or something, like an hour and 26 minutes, um, but I really enjoyed it. I think it's nice a video out there to have for those people who are looking to learn more about how these production schedules come out and what it involves. And not just the production schedule thing. I mean, that's that's what the video is about, but just how long it takes to get some of these things done and how many people are involved in it. If you're if you're interested in the in the technical side of, of what it takes to, to build something, I mean, you could apply the space whale as a ship. I mean, you, it's the same kind of thing. It's just, it'd be slightly different on who worked on it. And you can see like, oh, well, you want to design a a Banu Merchantman, and for example, because that's pretty close to the same size. You know, they're, they're looking at like three to four months of time to build this thing. They may try to include the space whale in the actual game. <laughs> I don't think they said. Anything I know, like I know. That. I said they said they, they submit the but... idea, but nothing is nothing is is put into uh, nothing is guaranteed. But still, I'm all for space whales. Who's for space whales? Everybody's for space whales. Everyone's for space whales. I think it's official. That that's that's. It's not confirmed, but it's definitely desired. On Around the Verse, it uh, looks like the white box of the Anvil Terrapin is complete, and they're going into gray box. I really look forward to flying this. Uh, this is a ship to me that is a part of my Polaris combo. I really, really want to fly this ship. Uh, I think my brother wants to as well. He wants to basically run the scanning and stuff, and I'm more than happy to let him do it. This week we covered, for the first time, revealed and discussed the uh the banu and or you know basically it looks like they're kind of related to groot a little bit they're and disgusting uh, tree monsters and of course the uh, they talk about how that the each one of the races is developed they they use a culture from earth to actually uh set up how they basically interact with the world so like the xian uh are based on uh on chinese culture 
the Van Duel is based on the Visigoths. The Tavarin uh, is feudal Japan. And the Banu is more of the Persian Empire. Uh, mostly dealing with uh, the traders and things like that. Uh, the great merchants of that time period. And, uh, of course, the Banu were the first race that the human beings actually encountered. And the, the first Banu that was encountered, basically, he was shot at, shot at by, by the human that discovered him. Um, and the Banu was actually an escaped fugitive from their society. <laughs> so it sounds like a kind of a mess. But from what I understand from watching the Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy... Um, is that that Banu, who was the, the the guy on the run, ends up being uh, gets a lot of status. Gets, I guess, basically becomes revered in a society for bringing humanity and their race together. And kind of a weird way to start, but hey, you know, whatever works. They like to display everything that they own. They they, they like to what they it's not not so much about money, like how much the bigger their bank account is. They like to be surrounded by the things that they like own. Experience, they, like yeah. Like, I went to Hawaii, you know, I'm going to wear some kind of, like, Hawaiian wear design on my shirt or something. Yeah, I've got this layer of flowers around my neck because I went to Hawaii. And yeah. they like to basically put everything that they've experienced, everything that they've done, everything they own on the full display uh, to kind of raise their status, to display their prominence. They're actually a very friendly race. And to a degree, they, they overcompensate. I guess from from a perspective, they kind of know they're repulsive to other races. <laughs> So they, they kind of um, they kind of put everything out there to be overly friendly. To kind of like really kind of emphasize that you know all we want to do is is work with you. And... Don't run. We are your friends. <laughs> and this time though, th- that that actually mean they actually mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's true. It always could start off good and end very badly. But you know, but it says a lot about a race when they're the only ones that can go into the Vanduul territory and not be attacked by the Vanduul. I mean, that really does say something about the nature of them. Vandal don't even look at them as a threat. They look at them as, uh, uh, you know, because they talk about early on, remember the Banu merchantmen said that this is the, that these ships will go into Vandal territory and they won't be attacked by the Vandal. They'll be, they'll, the Vandal will land, they'll trade with them. Um, so there's like this universal old school Sweden. You know, they're neutral. Everyone just kind of goes to them. I was and, thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> So yeah, exactly. So I, I think I think this would be an interesting race to play down the road, like as uh, expansions come out or whatnot. It would be very interesting to play a race like this, and I would hope that that particular race would would really focus on like diplomacy and trading and things like that. Man, that would just be so cool. I love. Uh, it's like I play a lot of 4X games, Lightning probably more so than myself. Oh my, and, so yeah, and and. and Trying to beat something or play something with, on the diplomacy level is pretty complex, and I don't know. I, this seems like the race to do it. This week, CIG released the Banu Defender for early purchase with LTI, and uh, well, this ship has presented a variety of interesting issues. And so, what well, what I've done here is I've kind of thrown together a little commercial for it. Go ahead and let you watch that, and then we'll go over exactly why the commercial is the way it is. Sit back and enjoy. Introducing the I Am Defender, a ship designed to justify the I Am Aiming layer, all the while promoting alien design that insisted on separating the roles of gunner and pilot, and then completely destroying it. Take to the stars with your I Am Defender, whose shield is all that stands in the way of you and death. But thanks to the mechanic of ballistics and shield penetration, your shields are pretty much pointless anyway. Good luck with that one, sucker. With cockpit visibility equal to an 80-year-old geriatric with cataracts, or perhaps designed by the Jedi Training Council. But with a blast shield down, I can't even see! Uh, how am I supposed to fight? Ooh. Yeah, let's see how long those advanced shields last after you start flying into every asteroid in known space. This sexy ship comes with a joystick in both the pilot and the gunner seat. But don't be deceived, that's just our ancient relic of the past. Kick that joystick aside, grab your mouse, and start playing with our new inactive mode, allowing yourself to keep one of your hands free to keep yourself hydrated during combat. Mmm, Red Bull. So come on down to your local Manu dealership today and go ahead and grab yourself an I Am Defender. Because when you make bad design choices in game design, just don't stop. Keep marching forward and double down on stupid. All 
All right, I'd like to thank uh, Crimson Target for the commercial's core script, and also thanks to uh, Nabotes for the IM footage. Now, he's actually gone and done this several times now, uh, at least two times over the course of years, showing that basically you can play the game with one hand with the interactive mode. And uh, the link is down below for the full video on his channel. Now, the Band of Defender uh, is supposed to be, basically, obviously by the name, Defense. It's supposed to be for defending Banu ships, Banu fleets. It's not supposed to be aggressive, even though it carries more firepower than a fully gimbaled Hornet. It's basically a ship that is not supposed to have almost any armor whatsoever, but carry massive shields. Uh, the stats on it, though, right now on the page, when you go and look at the, the stats, like when it comes to the shielding and things like that, they're nondescript. It's like TBA, to be announced. Yeah. They're not sure on the shields yet, but I imagine we're going to be seeing, like, size 4, maybe size 5. Maybe, even if they go ridiculous, 6, which would be just ridiculous. But, I mean, yeah. well, I don't know what ship even has size 6. I think the Connie and the Retaliator are 5 or something. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, but you know, to me, those large arms need to have a purpose other than just holding guns. When you look at the design of the ship, the, the there's a couple things about it. First of all, they describe the ship as how the Banu work is that there's a culture as they, they specialize in tasks. So you have a, a pilot who just his whole life, he's a, his career, he's a pilot. That's what he does. Then you have a gunner. And for pretty much his whole career, his whole life, that's what he does. He's a gunner. So this ship was made with the concept of pilot over here, gunner over here. And they work together to create a synergy to take on enemy targets. But when it was adapted for human use, if you're using the interactive mode, the pilot can do everything. Now, if you're using mouse relative mode, or you're using a gamepad, or you're using a joystick, you have to either use their terribly broken versions of interactive mode, which are horrible to use. I've already done a video on it, and I go on about it ad nauseum. Or, you have to get hire an NPC, or get a second player with you to do it. So, this ship, why I hate this ship, but I love this ship, <laughs> I hate this ship because uh, of the, uh, the visibility and uh, basically the, the, the nature of how it's so I am focused. But I love this ship for the same reason, because this ship is proving once again exactly there's two sets of rules in this game being formed by what control method you use. And that's, this is, this is just, to me, this has become the hero ship. Like, look at this, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you explain this? How do you deal with this? And a lot of people, they can't come up with an answer anymore. They're like, they get around it, they skirt around the issue. Uh, it's been a lot of debates on the forums just because of this ship, and I love it. It's, it's, it's brought stuff to the forefront, and I couldn't be happier about that. Um, now, the visibility issue, uh, with the claws being way out in the front like that, they should, in my opinion, those, those, while aesthetically speaking, I love the way that the, the design, as far as the, the lines and the curvature and the interior stuff goes, but I think those arms should pull back to the side of the ship. And basically, if you will, think of the, those arms having shield generators in them that protect the ship in a bubble. And they pull back and the like halfway across. Or something. Yeah, yeah, kind of keeping everything very tight to the ship. When it lands, they maybe extend, and that's how they're, then they got the landing gear coming out of them. That it's sounds not, familiar. It's like, it's like I said the exact same thing to you a couple days ago. It's true. Yeah, we, we do talk <laughs> once in a while. No, but the thing is, is that this particular design... Is going to need a massive rework. Uh, there's no way around it. Whatever you're looking at right now, it's not going to come out the same. And I was watching Minion Soldier, and he had a really great video, really great opening. Um, I'll drop the link down below for that as well. If you haven't seen his channel, definitely do. Awesome guy. He really just kind of just nailed it. This ship should not have been put out on sale yet. It wasn't ready. Um, even when you look at the... Uh, oh, wait, go... you said my favorite word, sale, which reminds me of another conversation we were having before. The price tag on the ship. $180. It's $180. It's not worth $180. It's not even worth $100. I mean, uh, you could, like, oh, well, maybe you're buying it for the firepower, but you can buy a Hornet for the same firepower, right? Yeah, I mean, it should... It, well, the Hornet actually has less, a little less firepower, but it should be around the cost of a Hornet. And I know they're saying that... Oh, it's an alien ship, so this is one of those things. It's an exotic thing, but I don't, I don't know. To me, it's like... There, if you have something that's too expensive, only the people that have tons of money and don't care will buy it, and then you're not making as much money. So if yeah. you have the price lower, people that are on the fence might decide to buy it. So it may be cheaper, but more people will buy it, and it means you make more money. 
Well, yeah, they're, they're they're, trying they're, to... there's a whole axis basically where if you, you, you raise the price too much and you minimize the amount of sales. And if, if the price was, say, down, let's say, let's say 120 instead of 180, I guarantee you they would make a lot more sales, a massive amount more, that well enough to cover the difference in the pricing on that. Uh, to me, the ship just isn't worth $180. It just isn't. And we know that by the time the final product comes out, it's not going to look like it does right now. It is just no way. It um, might even have the same guns. No, yeah. And these, these, there's just too many issues with it. And as I said when you're looking at the notes that the, the, uh, they were putting out in the ship, they're like, bad visibility, bad visibility. And they're just like, it's in the notes when you look at when you look at the the, the, the descriptions, the little little uh, markings, they, the little things that they write on the ship. And the developers have acknowledged that it's got problems. So why did they release it? I don't know. It, it, it almost seems like an act of desperation to some degree. I, I hate to say that. Oh, but... that reminds me of a, a robot chicken, I think, did it where it's Voltron and they're doing a dance party instead of a battle. And it's in the very end. It's time for a desperation move, guys. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but why, was... why release this? I mean, I don't know. I said I like I liked the general direction the band you were going. I like the art style. I think it's very cool. Uh, I think the general thoughts about it, you know, also those who play E, the ship looks like a very small Megatron. Um, you know, it, it kind of has that, that whole kind of aesthetic. And it kind of looks like a... You know uh, what? In, hmm. in thinking of that style of ship, an easy way to get around the visibility is to make the ship taller. Make it so you sit above it, so you're looking over those big prawns. It still has not as good visibility, but at least you can see like left and right. Yeah, I mean that definitely lifting up one thing or lowering the arms is another, or like you know maybe angle them down slightly, like the like the Van Duel wings like angle. Like how down. they are in the the landing pose that they show. Which well, is no, like... no, that that that's tilting forward. But I mean like like think of Ew. it like they're, they're connected in the same spot, but you like you you angle them forty five degrees, you know, a little they, better. Somewhere something. Yeah, something has, has to be, be done. done about it. Something has to be done. There's no way around it. And and because of this. You know, what, when I'm buying any ship or considering buying a ship, I like to know exactly what I'm getting. There's no way you can buy this ship right now and know what you're getting. There's too many uh, unknowns on it, and even the physical nature of the ship, the way it's designed, you just look at it. You just say, um, yeah. It, I think it, we're going to have another Vanguard here. Yeah, it's there's no way. There's no way the ship can come out like it is. It just isn't. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, and basically the issues presenting itself is that if, you, is that if you're using stick – using relative mode uh, with mouse or using gamepad you cannot utilize a ship to the fullest you can't replace those gimbals they're, they're forever gimbals they, they, they said it very clearly those though it basically has uh four of those size twos or are, size threes depending on which one you're looking at yeah the two size threes are swappable you can actually turn those to gimbals or they can say size three fixed or size two gimbals but those four on on, on the ends of the pylons the two on each side you can't change them and you know that's something that also might change. I mean, man, this is just there's too much. There's too many questions on this ship. There really is. This this I feel needed probably another couple of weeks of concepting. You know, maybe even just another week. I don't know. However long it would take, it needed more concept time. That much is certain to me. But yeah, basically, do I feel it's worth purchasing? No, I really don't. I'm glad it exists. It's brought a lot of uh, important issues to the forefront. But yeah, no, <laughs> it's saying all the right messages in the wrong way. Yeah, or exactly. Or is that the wrong messages in the right way? It's like, here's an example of what not to do. You know, and you can kind of look at it and go, wow, I'll just do the exact opposite of that. You know, it's like George Costanza on uh, on Seinfeld where he said, well, he started making he started making all the right decisions by going doing the exact opposite of what he would normally do. He was trying to get fired, right? Yeah, <laughs> he was getting promoted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, you're great. We're Costanza, we're going we're gonna to promote you. And he's just like... Just this dumbfounded look. And I think he started insulting his boss right to his face. Yeah. And he's like, ah, oh, I really like it when you I love that. a roast. We need, <laughs> we need these things. And we need someone like you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what this ship is. So I really hope that this is something that comes out great. As I said, I don't want to rip on CIG all the time. I think their artists are talented. I think their programmers are amazing. I think they have so many great thoughts. Just, just isn't one of them. It's, it's like they have sixteen different hands, and they're all like doing different things, and they're all amazing. Except for the, the last step when it, when it's given to the last pair of hands, it's like, oh man, this is amazing. Oh, I, I, oh, I, I dropped it. Oh, I'm sure no one will know. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's everything for this week. Uh, as always, leave comments down below. Leave comments uh, also on my Twitter. That's a good way to reach me as well. 
Also, I'm going to be setting up a Minds.com account because uh, you can do a lot more texting on that, a lot, a lot more uh, words. Uh, so the 140 characters, you're not limited to that. So anyway, guys, have a great night, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.